guys and welcome to day three of my Pokemon Hero Academia week. Uh, one, I'm sorry it's a little late because, yeah. Um, and two, because it's late, it's dark outside, which means that the light is really bad. We I'm using like a really weak light that's over here and then a wall light, which is kind of strong, but it's all the way over there. You can kind of see the thing right here. So, and then the, the reflection of my computer is also helping with the light. So it's like really bad, but it makes my face look really weird as well. So. You know, also I'm in a onesie because it's cold and this is comfy and warm, so there we go. That is the choice of the light, or not choice of the light, but the choice of the costume, <laughs> the, the, the clothing. Anyway, let's get into the video. Today's video, as you might have seen from the title, and as I talked about yesterday, this is going to be the Bakugo analysis video. And as with the two previous ones I did, or three I guess, because Livy was in two parts, um, I have like... A, a goal with this analysis because I could talk about literally any, anything about Bakugo but I'm gonna choose like a specific kind of uh, topic so with Sanji was more or less defending why his uh, character arc was important and why it makes sense for him to have that kind of character arc and for Luffy it was like pointing out how Luffy is smart but not in the uh, traditional sense and with this it's actually more or less um, explaining why Bakugo is a great character why he is my favorite character and kind of um, pointing out um, the the ways in which he has changed over the the cor the course of, the course of the series the yeah the throughout the series and just like a lot of fun little interesting things I've noticed about him in relation to Deku mostly uh, it's gonna focus a lot on their relationship um, but also just like in what kind of person Kachan is and where maybe a little bit about where he gets his anger from. Um, and how, like, just how he's changed and why we should appreciate it. Um, and just to start off, um, saying that Kachan, or Bakugo, I'm gonna probably go a little bit back and forth between how, what I call him, but saying that he is a great character does not necessarily mean he's a great person. I said this in my uh, video yesterday as well, uh, that just because he's my favorite character does not mean that I, uh, that he is excused from all the dumb, stupid, and bad things he has done to Deku when it comes to like bullying him, especially when you have the first chapter which literally uh, opens up with Kachan being like, you should just jump out a window and kill yourself and maybe in your next life you could you would get a quirk. Like, that's not okay, that's bullying and that's really bad bullying as well. It's not just like, I don't know, teasing insults. It's like literally, oh yeah, just go kill yourself. That's the worst kind. And don't ever say that or to a person in real life or on the internet. It's bad. Don't ever do it. Don't ever. Um, but with that being said, I still think he's a great character for a lot of things. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, so let's just get into it. I basically named this, uh, this analysis a story of redemption. Because what makes Kachan an interesting character is that he is... A bully type character who wants to become a hero like it's these two contradicting things that that makes his entire story so well because you have Deku who's like he's a sunshine character As I, again I said this yesterday he's like the good guy he's nice and he has good morals and he's just sunshine personified and he wants to be a hero and the only thing that's holding him back in the start is that he doesn't have a quirk and then you have other people from like uh, from UA or the the class A, like you have Ida, who comes from a, a family of heroes, and he want he looks up to his brother who helps people, and he wants to be another person who guides people. And you have um, Todoroki, who's kind of been molded by his father, and he wants to like he wants to become a hero on his own terms instead of on his father's terms. And you have all of these people who have like nice personalities and who wants to become heroes for these like noble purposes more or less like you have a few exceptions like Luraka who kind of wants to do it for the money for her parents and um other we don't know everyone but you have you have some nobler than others and then you have Kachan who is basically like I want to become a hero because he looks up to All Might and when he sees All Might he sees a person who always wins and that's what he wants to be and while that's not really a noble reason it's still very very interesting that he, as a person who has, let's call it a bad personality, he wants to become someone who is supposed to be the epiphany of goodness. Um, and that's just right there is is such an interesting standpoint, um, which is why I have, I have always said if Kachan at any point in the story should become a villain, I would literally stop reading it because 
you just ruined the entire story for me, basically. Um, because th that is just what I find interesting about Bakugo. Um, and essentially what kind- th that's what made him init initially one of my favorite characters and throughout the story with the way that his, uh, character arc, which is just the entire story basically, with the way that his character has, uh, been handled throughout the story, that's what has made him my favorite character. Um, and I want to go a little bit into, like, um, his past and what has made him the way that he is. Um, cause we know from volume eight, <laughs> seven, um, six maybe, there, around there, that, uh, he looked up to All Might. He was just a big of a fanboy of All Might as Deku was. He was, he looked at the TVs in the, in the windows of the shops and he was like, oh my god, look, it's All Might. Oh my god, he's, it's one against four and he's gonna win cause he is All Might. I want to be that sometime because that's the coolest. Um... And he just, he had that genuine glee on his face when he was just like, yes, it's all right. And he had that same face that Deku has, which is just, I find that so interesting that they had like the same admiration for all might, yet they turned out completely different with the same idol. <laughs> um, but the difference between the two of them is that obviously Bakugo was not only born with a quirk, but he was born with a very, very powerful quirk. A quirk that was basically perfect for fighting or becoming a hero, or in some cases, becoming a villain as a lot of people have pointed out um in the canon story <laughs> um and it 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 sets Bahuko off on a not necessarily a bad path but some bad parenting and uh <laughs> just raising him was not done good enough because he grew very overconfident in his quirk and he was uh as a child, he was probably stronger than most people his age or even a little older. Like, we even have a little instance of, um, I think they're in second or fourth grade, and a person who is two or three years older than him bumps into him, and he refuses to, like, say sorry for, for it because, it, one, it wasn't his fault. Um, and even though the guy's older, he's like, no, I'm gonna stay on my ground. And even though he has, like, tears in his, eye, in his eyes afterwards, and his friends are like, oh my god, that, that guy was, like, two years older than you, he's still, like... But a hero never backs down. It wasn't even my fault. Uh, so he has still like that kind of confidence about him, um, and all the way up until uh, up until he starts uh, UA, he has the kind of I am the best ever. Um, and he's I'm not gonna say he's never lost. I I don't have that about him, but I have the feeling of he's never really lost something that he should that he in his mind thought I should win this. Um, so like fights with children his age or something like that. Um, and then he comes into UA, and he he when he enters UA, he's the one who got the most points in the entrance exams, and he's just, um, again, even though people, like, they're kind of an edge with him because he yells a lot, uh, he's still seen as, like, not really the guy to beat, but he's still, like, he has the level because he got the most points coming into the entrance exams, and then he has the, he has two moments, basically, where he's just, like, where he, his confidence kind of wavers, um, and the first, obviously, is when Deku shows him that he has his quirk and Bakugo's entire world flips upside down. Um, and the thing is, with that moment, um, I've always, or not always, but with the information we got later on, I do understand why he lashed out like that, because he, uh, when he does so, he says, have you just always looked down on me? Because Obviously, it's, it's never happened before that a person uh, who's 15 years old, 11 years after you should, at, at the latest point, get your quirk, uh, has then gotten a quirk. Um, so Baku just go kind of logically, because he's a smart kid. He assumes, you must have hidden this for me for 11 years. They're childhood friends. They've known each other from before they got their quirks. Because we know that uh, there's the little... Um, um, flashback with them where they're walking and Bakugo has gotten his quirk and Deku hasn't yet and Deku is like oh I can't wait to get my quirk so we know that this is before um he found out he was quirkless so they have known each other for like a good 12 years or more um and I think I do believe they, they it's they do live in the same neighborhood and that's that's why they're friends or friends um so it is it is very logical for Bakugo to assume that Deku just looked down on him and just never told him about this quirk. Um, and then when he fights Deku later on, this is the second point where he has like this kind of moment where Deku beats him uh, in the 
the training rescue, not rescue, battle, you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> the one on ground alpha, or is it beta? You know the one where team Ida and Bahu go up against team Deku and Uralaka. Um, he has that moment there uh, where he's also just like, the look on his face when he loses is just like, I do not understand what is happening here. And he has like a mini panic attack because it's just like, what is going on? Which is perfectly understandable because I think uh, this moment, like... It really, it needs to be understood that they are very young at this point in time. And I'm not gonna say Kachan hasn't always been an angry person. I'm just saying that we probably see it a little more than like the average Kachan because his entire world in two weeks or so was just flipped upside down. Because it was perfectly assumptuous of him, perfectly assumptuous, uh, a, a logical con logical conclusion for him to assume that Deku would never be able to beat him in combat and when he then does it two years or two years uh two weeks after he just like showed that he had a quirk I don't even know if it was two weeks it might have been less um of course it's gonna come to a shock as shock to Bakugo and the fact that Deku then tells him right after that that um his quirk was given to him by someone um that probably helps Bakugo a little bit uh but it's still like it's <laughs> It's very daunting for him, uh, which is, again, I'm not going to say it's ca it causes a rift between them because obviously they're still not friends at this point and they still aren't in the where the manga is. I, I don't want to call them friends quite yet, um, although they're they're close, but we'll, we'll get to that by the end of this video and I can already tell you it's going to be over half an hour, but you know that already. You click the video. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, that's, that, that's the angry Kachan we learned about in the story. Um, of course he's still like, we still saw him in the beginning of the story being kind of angry, but you need to like acknowledge also, we didn't see him really being all that like angry, angry until after the sludge monster incident, incident. Um, and we also know that him and Deku also didn't talk after this, like between the incident and, um, them starting at UA. Uh, which, and again, interesting, cause you would assume that Kachan being a bully would just bully him, like, always, just never stopping. But uh, I do want to point out, I, I do think, and I know, I've read a couple of theories. Yeah, read a couple of theories. I was supposed to say see, but no, read um, a couple of theories that do support my statement. Of course, there are still theories that we can't know for sure, that uh, Bahugo hasn't bullied Deku as much as a lot of fans do think, because we actually... We haven't seen, like, obviously because we haven't had the full extended story of their childhood growing up together. But the fact that Deku continuously looks up to him and never never in the story seems to fully resent him um, should be pointed out. You should use the official translation because I know if you use the Fallen Angels translation, uh, which I, I don't want to talk really badly about it because... It is one of the first that's out there and it has some good things to offer, but they have been, again, I don't want to say anything bad about it, but if you compare it to the uh, the official translation and even the manga stream translation or other translations, I guess, uh, they, have, they have a translation which um, makes the rift between Deku and Bakugo a lot bigger than it is. Like, they make it seem like Deku really hates Bakugo and have him say that a couple of times, even though it's it never happens. So just, like, I will... <laughs> when reading into Bakugo's character, and if you want to read the series again for ba for, for for Bakugo's sake, really, I really use the official translation, or at the very least, uh, not Fallen Angels, especially if that's what you used the first time, because it, at the very least, with Bakugo, it gives a very different uh, perspective on him. Uh, which is again why I just yeah official translation it's it's very good. Uh, there's a reason why this is the one that that <laughs> that yeah is the one to use. Um, anyway, uh, my point was that Deku doesn't hate Bahugo, and the fact that he doesn't do that would just supports the theory that Bahugo did not bully him as much as it might have seemed. Because obviously, when the first instance with the two characters, the first time they interact, is Kashin bullying. Deku, you would assume, oh, well, he is then a bully, and this is just a daily occurrence. But it, there are so many hints to the fact that it isn't. Um, 
One of them is also that they still, like, obviously, <laughs> uh, Katjan calling Deku. Deku is supposed to be degrading because, oh, Deku, now that means someone who can't do anything, blah, 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 blah. Um, but Deku still calls him Katjan, um, which is, like, this very childish way of calling someone. Because uh, we know that the, the two friends that Baku um, hangs out with in the very first chapter... Uh, they're also the two people, the two kids, who was in, like, uh, Bakugo and Deku's group. And they all called him Kachan at that point, but we know from the first chapter that they stopped calling him Kachan and started calling him Katsuki st instead. Uh, I almost lapsed into, lapsed into Danish there, and I don't know why. Um, so, yeah, that's just a little fun fact. Also, I'm gonna, uh, go back a little bit to, with the Deku thing, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but, I will say that... I've completely lost track of this because I'm just winging this a bit, a little bit. I, like, I have notes here, but they're definitely not as scripted as my first three analyses were. Um, <laughs> but just, yeah, I got, I, got, I got a lot to talk about. Um, right, my point. Um, my point was that Bakugo, one, doesn't have as bad as a relationship with Deku as is maybe first assumed, even though it is still really, really bad. And second of all, we do see him lash out more um, than is probably average for Bahugo. Not saying that he doesn't, because he definitely has some anger issues, but the, f the his anger definitely seems more like outrageous in the beginning because of the Deku factor, which is just Deku having a quirk. Basically, his worlds have been, having been flipped upside down. That's not to say that he doesn't change though, because we know going into the summer sports festival arc that when uh, Kachan goes off the stage and very calmly says, I'm just gonna beat all of you, I'm gonna be placed first in this competition, Deku does point out that the old Kachan would have just like made it an, a crazy outrageous statement and like, kind of just yelled at everyone. So we know that he does has changed and he has probably, from his first weeks of experience in, um, in UA, it would have been like April, May, would have been two, two and a half weeks before the Summer Sports Festival. So he's been there for like a little bit of time, but not that long again. Uh, he has been humble a little bit with the experiences he's had. Um, and I I want to contribute a little bit of that to Kirishima. Because uh, we know that at the USJ they kind of form a little bit of bond there. Um, and I think for uh, Kachan having a friend like Kirishima. Uh, even though they're not, they're not as close as they become later. But I think that's a little bit grounding for him. Just to have someone, because in the beginning he's a little bit alienated from the entire class because he's just very angry and unapproachable. Um, so having Kirishima there is probably really good for him. But that's an, a whole other video I could probably make. Um, and I'm, I think I'm, I'm gonna make, because this is gonna be very heavily fo focused in the second half of this video. It's gonna be very heavily focused on Kachan and Deku, but I could make, if anyone is interested, an entirely other video dedicated to Bakugo and Kirishima and their friendship and why they're good for each other. Um, but I, I'm probably, I would want to do that after the next arc, I think, or just the next arc where they appear together, because, um, while I could make one now, I think we need a little bit more, because I, I, depending on what happens, I could probably talk a little bit more about it, but, yeah. I do have material enough to, like, make a 20-minute video about it now, just saying. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm gonna go a little bit into, uh, Kachan's... What can you say? Determination of becoming a hero, just his his um his own. What can you say? Don't know what to call it, but just yeah, his dreams of becoming a hero and, and what he's willing to do for it. Sorry. Um. So, I would say that Bahugo is a very. I hate the word determined because I use it so much, but he's very. When he has a goal, he is very adamant about reaching that goal and he's very very bitter about it when he doesn't or if he doesn't do it in the way that he wants to do it because we talked about before that or i do believe we talked about this before that um Bakugo is the kind of person who wants to win but he also he wants to win in a way that um that doesn't feel cheap to him like the obviously the best example is the summer sports festival where he wins but he doesn't win on the terms that he wants to win on so he doesn't count it uh, whereas I, I do believe I've mentioned before that uh, Deku is an entirely different person. Like, he could lose and be satisfied where Bakugo could win and be unsatisfied. Because they have two very different perspectives, per perspectives of winning and losing. Uh, so, 
uh, Kachan in the Summer Sports Festival was very, very um, dissatisfied with the results and just how everything went down, where Deku probably went away with a little bit more of uh, contentment, because even though he lost to Todoroki, he got through to him, he, he tried to help him, and he made him use his fire, which was like a, a step forward for Todoroki, and Deku made that happen, so he did something good, where Bakugo was like, I won, but like, Todoroki didn't even try to fight me back, so like, what's the point even? Um, which again is why he lashed out, because when he has a problem of when things doesn't go according to his head, he lashes out. Um, especially when stuff like his pride is on the line, because he's very, very prideful, as we also know, because All Might says that, and when All Might says you're prideful, you're, he's probably right. Um, <laughs> um, but I want to talk about, because uh, obviously I just talked about why, how Kachan is very, again, determined to reach his goal. Um, I want to talk about the two instances where he kind of uh, has these senses of unclarity. Um, and the first one, I already talked about this a little bit, his first fight against Daku, uh, where he loses, uh, you know, again, with the Ida Uraraka thing, um, where he's just, again, he's very uncertain, like, he leaves that day at the school, he leaves crying, um, and basically tells Daku, like, it won't happen again, you you won this one, but it won't have, happen again, and it's like this, it, it this exact moment is not him wavering a lot, but it's like this little instance of this perfect guy. The image is kind of cracking a little bit, and then the second one, which is the biggest moment Kachan has had of like just uncertainty in his, I don't want to say in his life, but just from the story we've seen and just the person that he is, uh, when Kachan says like, I would rather lose than work together with you. And Deku just gets so angry with him, which is so understandable, because obviously Deku, he admires Kachan as well. And it really, it says a lot, because Deku's response is very, like, he's first very sharp, and then he literally punches him in the face, because that's very unlike Kachan's to say. Um, but it does also go very much against Kachan's, Kachan's own um, view on, like, himself and the world, because with, in the end of the term exam, he has a, a big battle against like his pride versus uh, his sense of I want to win. Like he would either have to let go of his pride and work with Daku, or he would have to let go of victory uh, in order to like uphold his pride and not work with Daku. <laughs> Which is just obviously the choice should be obvious because working with Daku would in the long run also just help his overall situation but obviously he has a very complicated relationship with Daku and it's just it's hard for him um and yeah but ever since then ever since then we have not seen Kachan Bahugo sorry I'm just I'm done I don't care anymore we haven't really seen him waver from like his own ideals and what he wants to become um, and I really, I, I always, one of my favorite scenes is, all, uh, is when he's been kidnapped by uh, Shigaraki. And he basically, they tell him, why don't you join us? And he's like, no, because because of All Might, I don't want to become a hero and there's nothing you can do to change that. And I just, I really love that because it's like, he's been through a lot. He's He has this perfect story that just, it could, it leads to him becoming a villain, like, the, the rage he has against Deku, and just the, the, the way that he is as a person, like, it, it's, he doesn't want to become a hero because he wants to save people, he wants to become a hero because he wants to win, like, everything lines up with him perfectly to become a villain, but because of his own conviction and pride, and just the way that he looks up to All Might, he could never become a villain, which I think is very admirable, because, we know that a lot of the... We've seen villains who aspire to become heroes and then, like, at some point in their life, it just went wrong. Like, Stain is one of those people he literally enrolled into a hero school. I even think that was Yue, and then he just realized, wow, this shit is fucked up, and he left and became a villain. And obviously, Bakugo is not on the same road as Stain, but it's like, he has the qualities of a villain, yet he chooses to become a hero, and I think that's a strong choice. Um, because he is still rageful and he's still, again, I don't want to say he hates Deku, but he definitely has the, 
he could with a different slightly different mindset and with without if he didn't have if he hadn't had all might i think in his life i think he might have become a villain but i like to think that he didn't because of all might or possibly because other things that surrounded him um but yeah um wow i almost talked for half an hour and i haven't even gotten into the deck of stuff um this is gonna be such a long video okay and i can feel my voice or voice already going so this is gonna be so much fun for me um but i love talking about bakugo so much like when my friend first got into the series i literally talked for an hour about why i love bakugo and she was just like wow i did not know what i was getting into when i got into the series um but that's what she gets for getting me into one piece so i mean um but let's talk about deku before i just go off and talk about something else <sighs> deku Kasha and Deku, such an interesting uh, relationship they have going on there, because um, with Kasha, I'm going to talk about Kachan's feelings towards Deku, so we're going to like kind of ignore Deku's feelings in this conversation, because it is it is supposed to be about Bakugo. So, um, Bakugo at first, uh, we don't actually know at first, but let's start with from he gets his quirk and Deku is kind of deemed quirkless. He feels like, oh, Deku, I am better than him, and later on, Deku, I'm not just better than Deku, Deku is just literally nothing, he is a pebble on the road, he's I used that phrase so many times, and I really, really like it, not because, obviously, it's very degrading, but I just really like it, it's a very good imagery of how he felt about Deku. Um, and then it kind of, kind of goes on to Deku being a nuisance. Uh, it starts a little bit when uh, Deku says that he says that he wants to uh, apply to UA, and then when he has applied to UA, we have the, the two instances of Bakugo uh, lashing out the first time with "you should just kill yourself," and the second time where he kind of um, he corners him in like an alleyway or like a little I don't even know where it is. Let's let's call it an alleyway or like a little space behind a school. I don't even know where it is. Um, and just like, you, you're not supposed to apply to UA, you, I was supposed to be the first one from this school to get into UA and blah 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 blah. Um, so, at that point, Deku's kind of a nuisance, but he's still like, this quirkless little kid who can't really do things. And then he shows that he has a quirk and kind of becomes a threat, because... Why does he have this quirk? Is he just mocking me? What is going on here? And then, he slowly, very slowly, becomes less of a threat and more of a rival um and the transition is like it's so hard to pinpoint when exactly Bakugo started talking or thinking about Deku as a rival rather than a threat or someone who's just out to get to him because we know that definitely by the end of the term exam thing Deku is still a threat but we also know that after the Kamino Ward arc he is a rival because of how uh, Kachan talks to him and how uh, in the um, hero license exam arc he asks Deku have you finally made the quirk your own which would lead us to believe that he while he maybe not he doesn't admire Deku he definitely kind of kind of wishes the best for him and because yeah, it's <laughs> we're getting there. Um, so it's again, it's it's an, it's a transitional thing between the two of them, um, and I think another thing that's really interesting to point out is that there is probably some history between the two of them that we don't know because we know from the way <laughs> uh, we've seen them interact with each other and just uh, sometimes the way panels are framed. And I'm gonna show you a few of them. I I don't have editing on this computer yet, so I'm just gonna show you my volumes to p point out the panels, uh, but we know that they gravitate towards each other. And I think, I do believe I pointed this out at some at some point, maybe. Also, that might have been the scrap video the first time I made this analysis and just decided I didn't like it. Um, but I might have said this at some point before. Um, but they gravitate towards each other. Um, I'm gonna show you now just a few instances because I like the way that it's been set up. Because um, we know, where's the first volume? Oh my God. Um, here, so we have the when when we're doing the UA thing. Can you see where it is? This one, you know where this is from. Um, the two of them, Deku and Kachan, they are literally standing beside each other, and there was no reason for them to do so because Kachan does hate hate doesn't like Deku. 
but here they are, they like casually talking to each other, standing beside each other, not ignoring each other, even though like Cotton kind of snaps the deck with one point. But I mean, they they they're not on good terms, but they're really not on bad terms either. Like they are capable of having a rational conversation sometimes. Um, and I have where, where's the other volumes? Oh my god. Um, I have another one here, which I think is really interesting, because, um, as I said, when De Kachan finds out that Deku has a quirk, he definitely, he feels a little more alienated by Deku, he feels threatened by Deku, um, and he has a conversation with All Might too, where All Might is like, I know you feel threatened by him, but you can't expect a person at level 1 to, um, to have the same kind of, um, growth as a person at level 50, like, obviously, Deku is gonna grow faster than you, because he... He started like far, far ahead, and you, you, you level up quicker when you're at lower levels. Why you, you're so far ahead? Like obviously you can't, you can't expect to just improve at the same rate. Um, and I think after that, it kind of like, I think that really spoke to De uh, not to Deku, to Kachan more than anything, because again, words from All Might probably inspire him a lot more than words from Deku at any point in the series. Um, but I want to point out a little thing, which is in the summer camp, training camp, summer training camp, <laughs> um, which is something I always thought was so interesting. Because when they first arrive, uh, they have, what, food? Um, and they're sitting at, like, a there are, like, two or three tables here. Obviously, there are two classes, so there are a lot of tables and they're all sitting together. And I always find it really interesting that when you first see the, the, the seating here, like, you have a speech bubble here, which covers up who's Deku sitting next to, next to, but if you go over here and you see that he's sitting sitting next to Kachan, which I always thought was so interesting, because if they really did dislike each other as much as they say they do, why would they even, why would they do that? Um, and the thing is, if you go back, again, this is why I really recommend going back and just focusing on Bakugo in every single panel that you can, you will find that more often than not, they stand beside each other in like when they're all gathered, or they sit beside each other when they're all gathered, or something like that, which I find so weird. But I think that it's all it, it all comes back to the fact that they're childhood friends and they just naturally <laughs> gravitate towards each other because they're used to being around each other. And even though they're like, oh, it's uh, Deku is like, it's so hard to have a conversation with Bako because he always yells at me. Or Bokashan is like, I hate this person. He's he's he he acts like he's better than he is, and he acts like he he's better than me, which he isn't. Yet they still end up standing beside each other, sitting beside each other, or just like being around each other. And I just find that so fascinating. Like I cannot be the only one who finds that fascinating, and my hood is falling down. Um, and I, this all leads me. <laughs> to the fight, you know, the fight after the exam arc where Bakugo has his little mental breakdown over All Might having lost his powers because of him and them, the, them having a fight and Bakugo finding out about um, One For All and all that stuff because the entire fight there is, first of all, it's Kachan who initiates that they talk because obviously he knows they're gonna fight. Uh, but he still initiates that they sp spend time together, obviously not in the nice sense. Oh my god, my hoodie. Uh, not in the nice sense of, ooh, let's have a nice conversation over a cup of coffee and we can talk about our feelings. Um, it's not really that. As nice and funny as that would probably have been, it's not that. It is, I'm gonna talk to you for like 10 seconds and then we're gonna punch you in the face. Face? Face. Um... <laughs> Which, uh, that is Bakugo's way, to, way of dealing with emotions, but obviously not the best way of dealing with emotions. Um, but the fact of the matter is, of all the people he could have talked to, even though he's getting closer to Kirishima, he has parents, he has teachers who would probably help him if he asked. Or he could have chosen to stay silent. He decided, I'm gonna actually tell Deku how I feel right now and why stuff what kind of shit is going on in my head and that again speaks of so many things when it comes to those two because Bakugo is not a person to talk about his feelings he's not a person to do that yet he chose to go out there 
go to a specific location which is important for him and Decker's relationship. Like, talk about sentiment from that boy. And he's like, look, this is what I'm feeling and you're gonna fight me right now because I need to get this anger out. And Deku understands that and he's like, well, maybe it would have been better to talk, but I know that of all people now, I'm the only one who can receive his emotion and that's why we're gonna fight. <sighs> Honestly, the entire thing is just so heartwarming for me, even though they beat each other up. Uh, <laughs> um, but it speaks a lot to how Bakugo has <laughs> has changed. Because, again, if you go back to the first chapter, it started with Deku. You should really just kill yourself to him telling Deku, why did I become the reason for All Might's fall? Like, so heartbroken. Why would he trust Deku with those emotions if he didn't, like, in his heart believe that they could be friends or something like that <laughs> um and it's just it's that was in the span of like 100 and 110 chapters 100 i think it was like around 120 it's not a lot of chapters considering a lot of things like this is a series that could possibly go on for a very long time like a very long time because we're probably gonna follow these kids throughout their three years at ua and probably a little bit more and we're not even halfway through their first year. <laughs> and um, there might be a few time skips, we don't know, but it could be a very long series. Or it could be like, a, a, like it could never be a short series. Like, we're past the point of it being a short series, but if that's how much Bakugo changed in the span of 120 chapters, or however long it was, just imagine, like, where he could end up. Um, and I'm gonna come a little bit... Um, I'm gonna get more into this um, in my very last video of this uh, thing. Because, as you will probably notice, Bakugo is in a lot of these videos. Because I love talking about him and most of my theories are related to him. Because, um, you know, that boy is my life, apparently. <sighs> I don't know. Um, another thing I want to point out, just to, like, uh, talk about this gradual thing... Um, it's actually, like, not something I realized. It was something that I saw, like, there was a post floating around on Tumblr or something. But it was a really nice thing that, uh, where is it? Um, like, let's start. This is the, uh, volume 2 cover. So we have Kashan obviously very angry. Deku looking a little bit like he's ready to fight, which they are. It's the, it's the volume where they fight for the first time. And they're set up like there's the rift between them, there's the red background, which obviously like speaks about anger and stuff like that. And they just really don't look like they're good friends. Like they look a lot more like enemies than they look like good friends. Um And then you have like uh this volume here. This is volume eight. Here they have like an entirely different look about them. Here they're first of all, they're forced to work together. Um, but they're looking away from each other, and there's like, again, there's this weird rift between them, but All Might is in the middle of them, um, which obviously because he's their enemy, but it's like, the, the, rift, but the, the rift is still there with the red here, um, but you can see, like, it's not as, there aren't as many, like, angry feelings here as there was in the first volume, and I can't really show you the others, but if you go to some of the covers that have been, like, the color covers, You'll find that throughout the progression of the series, the in um, in the newer ones, let's say like that, in the newer ones, you'll find that they <laughs> they there's a tendency of them to be not only close together but like walk beside each other. So they it basically it goes from showing them as enemies to showing them as really awkward rivals to showing them as rivals and then to showing them as friends who walk down the same path together. Which I always thought, like, when I saw that post, I was like, dang, that's a good way of, like, showing the progression of their relationship. Because it's, it's a slow, slow road of them going from awkward childhood friends to bully and victim to kind of enemies to being hostile with each other, to being uh, not indifferent, but just, like, they have an undefinable relationship, to being weird rivals, to being actual rivals, to now being in between rivals and friends. Um, and we're at the point now where you, like, we, we always have, like, the two things with, um, or the thing with, um, um, with Deku, like, kind of stealing Bakugo's moves, because obviously he looks up to them him, and he said that as well. Um, so he steals Bakugo's moves because, oh my god, he's cool and I can do this lot too. 
Um, we also have Akko kind of selling me off for that, but we've now gone gone from that to Deku straight up stealing Bakugo's techniques to Bakugo telling Deku, oh, you could improve your moves by doing this, or you're a little bit too predictable when you do this, maybe change up your style a little bit. Like, dang, that's <laughs> that's an improvement on their relationship, like, tenfold, a hundredfold. It's ridiculous to go back and look at. Um... And, <laughs> like, this entire thing, fuck, I've talked for a long time, holy crap. I'm sorry for all this, sorry for all this swearing. Um, but, yeah, th th this, uh, I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, but, yeah, all of this just contributes to why Bahugo is my favorite character, because there's so many layers to him, and he has this very nice gradual change, um, and there are so many little things to pick apart and just look at, because... Uh, what, um, let me get his name right, uh, Horikoshi does really well is using, um, the panels and just using these subtle little things, like, he's very good at using expressions as well, um, so you'll, there's a good, uh, what can you say, um, if you go to the earlier chapters, uh, like, the first 50, I would say, the first 50, 40 chapters, maybe, you'll see the very different facial expressions of Bakugo when talking to um, Deku, of talking to All Might, of talking to a friend, in this case it would be Kirishima or maybe Kaminari a bit later on, and talking to maybe a teacher, regular teacher, like, there's so many things you can look at. <sighs> and I love it all. <laughs> um, okay, I am really gonna stop talking now. Um, there are probably a few things that I didn't cover that I could have talked about, but we're getting into 40 minutes now, so... If you have any questions, feel free to leave those questions in the comments below because I am not scared of leaving you a four-page essay on on Bakugo if you require that. Um, it might take a little time for me to type it up, but I would probably do it. I have done it once. Not on Bakugo, but I did it once where like I, I wrote a reply and I was like, how long is this? And I put it into a Word document and I was like, damn, this is three pages. <laughs> so um, yeah, I have done shit like that before. Um... But I think this really covers my Bakugo analysis, which is basically like, why, why do I think Bakugo's a great character? And again, just as I said in the beginning, being a great character does not necessarily mean that he's a great person. I would not want to be Bakugo's friends. I really wouldn't. Yet I would still die for him. Um, but this, re this really ends off this video. So, you can leave a like if you liked anything that I had to say. Like, if you, if you were stuck through 42 minutes of me talking about Bakugo, like thumbs up to you. Uh, you can leave in the comments below what you thought of this analysis, if your feelings about Bakugo changed, if you're like, damn, I should go back and read the story, or if you have anything to add, because I know a few of you are also Bakugo fanatics, like me. Um, and you can subscribe to see more of my videos. I'll, obviously, I'll have a new Bakugo no Hero video up tomorrow. I don't know whether it'll be a review or a theory. Yeah, it would be a theory. Um, we'll see. Um, but yeah, it'll be. It depends on if, whether or not the chapter's up. But you know. Uh, but until next time, bye bye.